Hello everyone, this is Jack with Obedia. Today we're going to be taking a look at Pro Tools and some of the different editing functions. Before we get started uh, with the editing tools and the different functions here, uh, I want to just mention that I am on Pro Tools version 12.8.0. So if you're using a newer version of Pro Tools, you may see some other options that are not present in this video. If you have an older version of uh, Pro Tools, you may not see some of the stuff that is in this video. So that's something to consider before moving on. Um, this session that I have here, just to give you a little bit of background information on it, um, I have a tempo, so that's going to inform some of the options that I select in this video. Uh, the tempo for this is 125. So the only thing that I've done with this session is I've imported the audio, and then you can see over in my mix window here, uh, I set up just a simple mix bus. So every track was bussed to a uh, scent, or let's say the, the output was changed to a uh, bus, and then I right-clicked that bus 1-2 is what it used to be called, and I renamed that mix. Then I set up an aux input over here and uh, routed the input of that to mix, so that way all of these tracks, my source tracks, are coming to my mix bus, and I solo safed that here, so that way I can solo these independent tracks. If you're not familiar with any of that stuff that I just talked about, there are some routing videos that you may want to take a look at. I also have a master fader here just uh, so I can see uh, the master output. Uh, that's not really necessary, but that's something that I just want to mention. Uh, all my faders were at zero, but one thing that you will see is I did adjust clip gain. And adjusting clip gain is just another gain stage that allows me to set up uh, some mix levels or a better balance before I actually start using my faders. So that's something you may want to consider. Um, so what we're going to be looking at today is basically the top left corner, uh, just setting up tools there. So Pro Tools functions the way that you want, and then a couple of other things. So first off, we have four different editing modes here, and I would say that ma the majority of the time you're going to be in these two editing modes. Uh, the way that I would decide which editing mode you want to be in, most of the time at least, is if you have a solid tempo for the session. So in this case, the whole session is at 125. If there were different tempo changes, that's fine. As long as you're using a grid and there's a tempo that you have established throughout the whole song, even if that tempo changes, I would turn the grid on up here. So make sure the grid is on and you can change the density of that grid by clicking to the right of it. And you can also change what type of grid it is over here by clicking uh, further to the right. So I'd make sure the grid is on and then I'd make sure that I'm in grid mode. Um, you have a relative grid, which if we click there, you get that purple grid. We're not re really gonna talk about that today. We're just gonna be in our normal, um, let's say absolute grid. So that way it snaps uh, our edit uh, cursor here snaps exactly to the grid that we're seeing, which is normally what we want. So if we have a tempo throughout the session, we normally want to have the grid on and we want to be in grid mode, the blue grid mode. If we don't have a tempo, we'll probably turn grid off and we'll stay in slip because there's no reason that we need to actually have a grid there. What are we snapping to? Uh, so that's something to consider there. Spot and shuffle are going to be used uh, for specific editing functions. Spot, you basically go into a lot of times just temporarily. You click on a clip and it tells you where to move that clip. So this is a, a edit function where you're moving things. Uh, shuffle is a option where it's a different kind of edit mode. So if I'm in shuffle, let's say I turn grid on, I select this measure here and I want to delete it. This is just the normal grid behavior, so it just deletes it. However, if I was in shuffle mode, it will delete it and kind of remove that measure and then take this whole thing and move it to the left. So let me back out real quick. I'll zoom out and I'm going to delete that tiny little chunk and you'll see this whole clip move to the left. So I deleted that and now this clip is moved to the left. Let me undo that again and you'll see the clip move back. So now it moved back. And then if I delete it again, you'll see the clip jump left, right? So that behavior, uh, it, we get that through going into shuffle mode. So that's something to consider. The other stuff, uh, we could spend 30 minutes on almost each one of these different uh, tools up here talking about why it's there and different reasons that you may want it enabled or you want to disable it or how to set it up and workflows and all this kind of stuff. But uh, without getting that deep, I'll just talk about some quick things that will help you set up Pro Tools so that way it's behaving the way you want. 
So the first thing is you have these different tools, basically what your cursor becomes, these different types of cursors. Uh, these three are our most popular. And if you just take your mouse, mouse over something, just leave your mouse there, you'll see that's the trim tool, that's the selector tool, that's the grabber tool, and this little trick works with just about any other area as well. But the trim, selector, and grabber are going to be our three most popular tools. And instead of selecting the grabber and then moving something and then selecting the edit uh, or the selection tool and then doing that, what we can do is click right above those three and get a smart tool. And then depending on where our cursor is, notice I'm moving it up and down on that clip. We have on the top of the clip, we have this, uh, this selector tool. Uh, then if we go to the bottom of the clip, we have the grabber tool. And if we go to one end of the clips, for instance, the, the leftmost end, we get a trim tool. Or if I was on the right end of a clip down here, for instance, I get a trim tool on that end as well. I also can go to the top left or right corner and get a fade tool. Uh, there's the right corner there. So you can do fade in and fade out. So basically, if I stay on this smart tool, I don't have to come up here and click all of these different modes all the time or the different edit tools, I just stay there. So that's a, a time saver and something that makes things a little bit more efficient. The other thing are the tools right below it. So you can see right now I have five tools enabled, those five tools that are blue. Uh, starting from the left here, just to give you names of these tools, uh, this is tab to transients, mirrored MIDI editing, automation follows edit, link timeline and edit selection, and then link track and edit selection. Normally we want those five on. There are uh, plenty of situations where you might want to turn them off or maybe just for a second, or maybe you want Pro Tools to behave differently than what I'm demonstrating in this video. But for the most part, uh, and for most people, we want those five on. Uh, one thing that, that comes on for a variety of reasons, or one tool gets turned on, is this last one over here, or the, that used to be the last one until they added this, um, this layered editing. So this one here is called insertion follows playback. And basically what this does is it makes Pro Tools behave like a tape machine. Um, this can be very annoying. So let's say you are listening to the beginning where the drums come in. So you're listening to this and you're kind of doing that over and over and you keep hitting space and it jumps back. This is the way that we normally want things to happen if we were listening to the vocals over here. You watch me now. We want to listen to that again. You watch me. So this is how we normally would want Pro Tools to behave. However, if Insertion Follows Playback was on, then it functions like a tape machine. So if I hit play, watch me now. and then I hit stop, now notice my edit point or my insertion point is now at the end where I stopped it. So if I hit play again, it picks up from where I left off. If you have an insertion point that you are editing, for instance, let's say right here at the beginning of measure 30, and you want to come back to that, watch me now. This is normally what we want. However, if insertion follows playback is on, now. we've now just lost that point. Oh. That insertion point follows our playback. So that can be a really uh, annoying option that's on up there. Uh, there's only a couple other things I want to cover in this video. One of them is this little AZ over here, which is edit window, which is the window that we're on, keyboard focus. So basically what we're doing what, by turning this little AZ on is we're saying, hey, focus all of our quick shortcuts on this window here. And if we're focusing on that window, what we can do, um, instead of holding down command or option or control and having more complicated shortcuts, we can, we can make those shortcuts quicker. So for instance, something as simple as command left bracket and command right bracket to zoom in and zoom out. Zoom out. If we have that AZ enabled over here, which is edit window keyboard focus mode, we can R and T. And then R and T, we will be able to zoom in and out more quickly. Same thing if we were like selecting a certain track and just deleting something. Uh, and then we wanted to undo that. Instead of hitting Command Z, we can just hit, uh, if I just delete that again, we can hit Z. So one keyboard shortcut or one key keyboard shortcuts uh, are nice. And that's the edit window keyboard focus. There's a couple other things uh, that you may want to tweak, which are the view options here for the um, horizontal rulers. So right now I have four shown, or I'm sorry, three shown. Uh, often you may want to have uh, meter shown as well. Sometimes that's helpful if you have different tempo or um, time signature changes rather throughout a song. So that's nice to have those there. And then the other option are your 
edit window view options for tracks. So in here, you may want to enable things like inserts. So you can actually see the first bank of inserts in the edit window. So you don't have to, you know, command equals all the way over to your, your mix window and then come back. The other thing that sometimes people want uh, is the first bank of sends. So that way you can see sends here. You will see, you know, if you have a large screen with decent resolution, sometimes people want all of the sends and all of the inserts so they can see everything. And if we want everything as far as the all here uh, option where every option is viewed, we can see all the comments and mic pre settings and instrument settings and real time properties and everything. Often, that's just too much of the screen that I'm not really using. So I would get rid of some of those. I normally don't need real time properties. Most of the inserts or sends um, instrument mic pre or comments in this view. So I can hold down option and remove them quickly or I could come over here and just uncheck them from the list. Uh, normally I would set it up something like this and that way I'm really using the edit window for editing and then if I want to do any kind of mixing I can come over here and do that or if I am doing like a mixing session and I've already done editing I might set up my first bank of inserts and my first bank of sends so that way I can see it here um, so this right here is how most people would set up Pro Tools. Of course, if you're recording, you may want different rec uh, record modes. Normally, I would be in Quick Punch. Uh, there's some other videos on that that you want to check out. I've got I got to that option by just right clicking the the uh, record button. You may also want to loop things, so you can right click the play button and you can go to loop, uh, and then you can select an area and it'll loop as you. Let's say you want to just jam on something or you're going to listen to an edit over and over or whatever so you can loop things that way but this is normally how i would set up pro tools uh, for everyday use unless there was uh, a specific thing that i needed pro tools to do that was that was different of course you may have different preferences uh, there's a lot of different workflows that different tools are useful for but hopefully that gives you a good starting point and somewhat of an explanation as to why we have that as a starting point if you have more questions about these tools and want to go more in depth uh, let us know i'm sure we'll have some other videos coming out pretty soon um, take a look at the cambridge mix library and you can listen to this whole song and upload your mix of the song or at least download the multi-tracks and play around with it and let us know if you have any other questions thanks for watching today's pro audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly obedia can help you to get the most out of your pro audio hardware and software why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.